Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, Daniel the Miracle Man Jacobs, he's been speaking to Eddie Hearn on Instagram, and Boxing Scene has done us the liberties of transcribing the interview. So shout, shout out to Boxing Scene, shout out to the, the great and incomparable Keith Eidek, a great boxing writer. Um, Daniel Jacobs was speaking about his contemporaries in the, in the, in the super middleweight division. As many of you know, Daniel Jacobs has moved up to 168, and he's looking to be a factor in the division. And one guy that he was speaking about was Callum, Callum Smith. Now listen, uh, we've spoken at nauseum. You know, we've spoken a lot about Callum Smith over the last four months or so, four and a half months or so here on True School Sports because of his controversial fight with John Ryder, which I still think he lost clearly. And I think that before he does anything else, whether it's Jacobs or another unification fight, he needs to give John Ryder a rematch somewhere that's not in Liverpool because John Ryder beat him. It was so clear he beat him. But here, let's see what Jacobs had to say about Caitlin Smith, and then we will, we will dissect from there. He said, I quote, I love that fight. I don't think uh, Smith has truly been tested yet, especially against a top-notch, world-level fighter. I'm not sure if it's been hard for him to get fights at that level, but his last fight with Ryder, if I'm not mistaken, was a very close and tricky fight. So that means, you know, you can tell Jacobs hasn't watched that fight because... It wasn't no damn close, tricky fight. He got his ass whooped. But anyway, we, uh, he continued on by saying, um, I quote, it, uh, it's really so many opportunities out there for me, but the top-notch guys is just for me. It's exciting because they're all good, and I know they're all going to test me. And now that I'm vouching that I'm going to be the best at 168, and we just see me in my last outing, me finally have a chance to be comfortable. And, you know, I made... The son of a legend say no moss and fire rounds, you know. So give me another opportunity to get acclimated and let's go for the gusto. So there you have it. Daniel Jacobs, the respectable and the honorable miracle man, Daniel Jacobs. He wants he wants some smoke in 168. He wants to prove that he's the best. Now, he's, he's talking about Kalen Smith. And he's saying that uh, that fight with John Ryder was a close, tricky fight. Now, that, 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 that's, he, he hasn't seen the, the, the Kalen Smith fight because anybody who's seen it knows that that was a clear-cut John Ryder win. No doubt about it. And if you don't see that, then most uh, mo most scenarios, you probably have some sort of emotional attachment to John uh, to Caleb Smith because John Ryder won that fight, and John Ryder should have became world champ and, and and had so many things going right well, well going for himself moving forward. But they took it from him. You see what I'm saying? So, um, how does he match up with Caleb Smith? Let's let's talk about that for a second. Now, as much as I don't like Caleb Smith, I actually think. Daniel Jacobs is a, is a good matchup for Caleb Smith, um, and I'm, I'm going to tell you why. Caleb Smith is a, is a very limited fighter. You know, he's a, the things he's good at, he's good at. Like, don't, don't get it twisted. He, 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 he's got good power. He's huge, huge for the weight class. He's, a, he's, he's the gargoyle of the damn weight class. He's so damn massive. But, you know, he's right there to be at. He's, he's right on the line. You don't really see many angles with Caleb Smith. But he's got a good, a solid jab. And he's got a really good right hand. And he, when, he, when it lands, it puts you out. So that's why I think the John Riders and fighters like that, you know, these shorter, uh, these shorter fighters who can step off and move off angles, I think those guys are going to give Caleb Smith more problems than a guy like Daniel Jacobs. Daniel Jacobs, while he is good, and I respect Daniel Jacobs, I respect everything he's done in his career, coming back from cancer, Conducting himself the way he does in boxing, you know, I got nothing but good things and the utmost respect for Daniel Jacobs. But in terms of just technically, just just in terms of his boxing, nothing else but boxing. Daniel Jacobs does not, nor will he ever have the most durable chin in the world. It's the same Daniel Jacobs that got flattened by Dimitri Pirog. It's the same Daniel Jacobs that got dropped by Sergio Mora. Okay, and because he gets caught with these big shots. A bit more than we, a bit more than he should, you know. A guy of his agility and and the, a guy of his athletic ability, I don't think should be getting caught as much as he does. But he does for whatever reason he just does. So I think, and I believe wholeheartedly that his style is a good match for Caitlin Smith. It's the kind of match. It's the kind of fight for him where if he's able to do what I think he could do, it would really uh, raise his stock in my eyes. Um, because even though I think Daniel Jacobs' style is tailor-made for him, not tailor-made for him, but it's a good matchup for him, he's just, he, I don't know, man. Kalen Smith, I, I, I just think he's not as good as advertised. I mean, no, no, no disrespect to him. 
I'm happy for what he's done in his career. You know, he beat George Groves earlier in his career. But I mean, he gets he's a weird fighter to watch because you see him, right? You see you see him going there sometimes, and he'll 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 beat a George Groves pretty clearly. But then he'll fight. Um, who was that guy he boxed? Who was that guy he boxed? There was a kickboxer guy he boxed in the in the World Boxing Super Series. The, the round before, the round before. George Groves, his name is escaping me, but he didn't, he didn't look good in that fight. The, the kickboxer guys did pretty good against him. And John Ryder, you know, another fight he was supposed to do good in, and, and John Ryder dominated him, beat him, the pillow to the post, and he, got, he was lucky to get a gift because Eddie Hearn's trying to keep him, keep his name in the Canelo running. But um, for me, it's like if Caleb Smith wants to really, with me, I'm not, I'm not speaking for nobody else, with me, if he wants to stick his flag in the ground and, and get any sort of credit for me, I think the, the Daniel Jacobs fight is good because – Jacobs is 33 years old, so he's not, he's old, but he's not like too old to where you could say he's like a shot fighter. He's still got enough left in the tank to, to beat the Candle, the Candle Smiths of the world, but his style and the vulnerabilities he has, they, they play into Candle Smith's style and his strengths. So that's why I think this fight could be good. Um, I would say on paper, I would have it as a 55-45 fight in favor of Candle Smith, only because he's younger and only because Daniel Jacobs always seems to get touched with a big shot and his chin wasn't durable at 160 so what makes you think it's gonna be durable at 168 i mean i just i, I just can't see it maybe the extra weight helps him but also he's, he's he's getting punched by bigger and more powerful guys and this guy caleb smith okay caleb smith isn't necessarily he's not caleb plan he's not you know giving you angles and showing you good defensive boxing ability you know he's not showing you those things but what he is showing you is a good one a, a, a good jab and a devastating right hand and he can put you out and he can put you out and i just think Daniel Jacobs, I'm not, I'm not completely sold that his legs can get out the way of the big punches of Caleb Smith when he does decide to commit and put his body weight behind all those shots. So we'll see. You know, there's, there's a, lot, a, lot, a lot of factors that go into that fight. Also, Caleb Smith is huge for the weight, so he might be getting weight drained himself, and that could play uh, into Daniel Jacobs' um, favor. So it's a good fight. It's a good fight. It's gonna let us know about the the the, the landscape of 168 and where, where these where these guys both fit into that landscape. You know, is Caleb Smith a a tricky holder or is he a top world champion? And is Dale and Jacobs gonna be a factor in the division? You know, the jury's still out because his only fight was against Chavez Jr., who unfortunately, you know, he's not quite the fighter his father was. He hasn't turned he, he hasn't turned into that uh, due to his lack of dedication and you know I, you know his lack of Fortitude, yeah, fortitude in the ring. So you can, we can't really take much from the Jacobs Chavez Jr. fight, but that's what it is. Daniel Jacobs talking about Kendall Smith. He looks like he's keen on fighting him. What would you, what do you guys think? Would you want to see Daniel Jacobs fight Kendall Smith? And if they do fight, who do you favor and why? Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you take the time to subscribe. Like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take care, guys.